Walt Roquin had spent the day car shopping with his daughter, Deborah. He dropped her off to her south side apartment, watched her walk inside, turn on the lights, and wave to him that everything was fine. He drove away and didn't know that was the last time he would ever see his daughter alive. Her disappearance gripped the newspaper headlines. What happened to 18-year-old Deborah Lynn O'Quinn? On the microfilm at the Jacksonville Public Library, in the harsh black and white, there emerges article after article retelling a brutal story. Sergeant Dan Jansen with the cold case unit at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says the morning after Walter dropped off Deborah, her roommate came home. And when she walks into the apartment, this is around 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, she sees her brother asleep. When I say her brother, I'm referring to the roommate's brother, asleep on the uh, couch. And she awakens him and says, hey, where is, uh, where's Deborah? And he said, well, she's not here. I haven't seen her. But Sergeant Jansen says what was even more disturbing, there was a lot of blood around the apartment. On her bed, uh, there, in the bathroom, there's some smears on the wall, there's some blood on the carpet. So of course she gets really inquisitive with her brother. And he basically discounts it and said he thought maybe there was an accident or something happened in the, the apartment. Sergeant Jansen has asked us not to name Deborah's roommate or her brother due to the reopen investigation. When Deborah didn't show up for work that morning, she was reported missing and the search began. Detectives knew by the amount of blood, something far worse than an accident had occurred. And then came a break. They found a witness, a woman who lived across the courtyard who thought she'd heard a woman scream in the night. Got up, looked out the window, and she saw a lot of activity in Deborah's apartment. She said all the lights were on, and she said um, there was a male that was walking throughout the apartment. Um, she sees him actually leave the apartment and go down to a pickup truck. He was carrying something. She said he was carrying it like a tire, but it wasn't round like a tire. Detectives believe it was Deborah's body, but the witness, unsure of what she saw, didn't call police. Jansen says officers confiscated a knife from the roommate's brother's car. It was tested microscopically and there was evidence of bone being on the, the serrated edge of this knife. However, they could not say there was not enough of the evidence there to 100% um, identify it as a human or belonging to Deborah. He says that though detectives at the time were suspicious of the brother's story, they found another piece of evidence, a palm print in Deborah's room that didn't match the roommate's brother or anyone in their investigation so far. Did that occur at the time of the murder, that palm print, or did it was it from a previous visit, or we don't know. Then in December of 1979, Deborah's body was finally found, heavily decomposed in the woods off Mount Pleasant Road, and it confirmed detective suspicions. She had been stabbed to death. A few years later came a big twist. Serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to Deborah's killing. He was well known for multiple killings in the South and had spent time in Jacksonville, but was also known to exaggerate. He was notoriously known for many, many murders or many that he admitted to. Some of them that he tried to admit to, he wasn't involved in. And this is one of those type cases. Detectives determined Lucas's confession was a lie. The case grew cold as the years, then decades passed. Walter died in 1996 without an answer about who killed his daughter. But detectives say this case isn't over. They still have evidence and blood kept from Deborah's apartment, all things they can now run through DNA testing. I'm hoping that the person involved in this has, has thought that they're very comfortable with what they've done and gotten away with it, that they may have spoken to somebody or mentioned it or talked about it. And if they, if they have, you know, by all means, contact us at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office or our partners at Crime Stoppers. And hopefully bring justice to whomever viciously ended Deborah's life that stormy night in 1979. In Jacksonville, Katie Jeffries with photographer Jeff Renfro for First Coast News.